Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So, a nun and a monk are riding on a camel in the desert for days. Suddenly, the camel falls over and dies. Both panic, but know that they have to accept their deaths. So, the nun says to the monk, I know that we will die. So I want to tell you that I always wanted to see a naked man. The monk says, yeah, that's also what I always wanted. So the monk took off his clothes and his butt naked. The nun asks him, what is that between your legs? The monk answers, it's a magic wand. When I put it in somewhere, new life emerges. The nun says, put it in the camel, then we can ride on. <laughs> so little. Johnny was visiting a friend of his in New York during the winter. He and his friend went outside to play in the snow. After about an hour, his friend's mother called them back inside and had them remove their wellies and gloves. Johnny's friend's mom was a tall, voluptuous woman who would warm her son's hands by putting them between her thighs. So as usual, when her son came in from playing in the snow, she asked if his hands were cold, to which he replied yes. She then put them together and stuck them between her warm thighs. After a few minutes, she asked, Are they warm yet? And the little boy said yes. Johnny watched his friend and waited for his turn. His friend's mom then asked him if his hands were cold, to which he replied yes. So she took his hands put them together and stuck them between her thighs. After a few minutes, she asked if his hands were warm yet and he said yes. So she took them out. Johnny continued to stand there with a sly grin on his face. When his friend's mom asked, Well, what is it now, Johnny? What's wrong? Johnny looked up at her and replied, My ears are cold too. <laughs> <laughs> so an Irishman was drinking in a bar in London when he gets a call on his mobile phone. He orders drinks for everybody in the bar as he announces his wife has just produced a typical Irish baby boy weighing 25 pounds. Nobody can believe that any new baby can weigh in at 25 pounds, but the man just shrugs. That's about average up our way, folks. Like I said, my boy's a typical Tipperary baby boy. Two weeks later, the man returns to the bar. The bartender says, Say, you're the father of that typical Irish baby that weighed 25 pounds at birth, aren't you? Everybody's been making bets about how big he'd be in two weeks. So, how much does he weigh now? The proud father answers, 17 pounds. The bartender is puzzled and concerned. What happened? He was 25 pounds the day he was born. The father takes a slow swig of his Jameson Irish whiskey, wipes his lips on his shirt sleeve, leans into the bartender and proudly says, had him circumcised. <laughs> so my Uncle Martin went through an awful, gut-wrenching divorce that changed him forever. He filled the head of his son Saul, my cousin, with warnings of the evil ways of women, begging him to never fall under a woman's spell. It made quite an impression. Saul dutifully stayed away from women the way his father wanted him to. And he remained a virgin through college, through dental school, through his residency, and even as he opened his own practice. One day, a pretty woman walked into Saul's dentist's office for a cleaning. They got along well, had a good conversation, and it even got a little flirty. After a while, she looked at him just so and said, Hey, if you're not busy this evening, would you care to take me for dinner? I'm sorry, I can't, said Dr. Saul. I'm flattered, but I don't consort with women. You don't consort with women? She asked, with a hint of a smile. May I ask why not? All women want is to seduce you, said Saul. 
They try to get you in bed. Then they bite your pecker off with the teeth in their beaver. We don't have teeth there, the woman exclaimed. Yes, you do, said Cousin Saul. We really don't, and I can prove it. She shuts the door, hikes up her skirt, and pulls her underwear to the side. See, she said. No teeth. Well, no wonder, said Saul. Look at the condition of those gums. <laughs> so Bubba walked into a doctor's office, and the receptionist asked him what he had. Bubba said, shingles. So she wrote down his name, address, medical insurance number, and told him to have a seat. Fifteen minutes later, a nurse's aide came out and asked Bubba what he had. Bubba said, shingles. So she wrote down his height, weight, a complete medical history, and told Bubba to wait in the examining room. A half hour later, a nurse came in and asked Bubba what he had. Bubba said, shingles. So the nurse gave Bubba a blood test, a blood pressure test, an electrocardiogram, and told Bubba to take off all his clothes and wait for the doctor. An hour later, the doctor came in and found Bubba sitting patiently in the nude and asked Bubba what he had. Bubba said, shingles. The doctor asked, where? Bubba said, outside on the truck. Where do you want me to unload them? <laughs> so one Sunday morning, William burst into the living room and said, Dad, Mom, I have some great news for you. I am getting married to the most beautiful girl in town. She lives a block away, and her name is Susan. After dinner, William's dad took him aside. Son, I have to talk with you. Your mother and I have been married for 30 years. She's a wonderful wife, but she has never offered much excitement in the bedroom, so I used to fool around with women a lot. Susan is actually your half-sister, and I'm afraid you can't marry her. William was heartbroken. After eight months, he eventually started dating girls again. A year later, he came home and very proudly announced. Diane said yes. We're getting married in June. Again, his father insisted on a private conversation and broke the sad news. Diane is your half-sister too, William. I'm awfully sorry about this. William was furious. He finally decided to go to his mother with the news. Dad has done so much harm. I guess I'm never going to get married, he complained. Every time I fall in love, Dad tells me the girl is my half-sister. His mother just shook her head. Don't pay any attention to what he says, dear. He's not your real father. <laughs> so, Cinderella is now 95 years old. After a fulfilling life, with the now dead prince, she happily sits upon her rocking chair, watching the world go by from her front porch with a cat named Bob for companionship. One sunny afternoon out of nowhere appeared the fairy godmother. Cinderella said, Fairy godmother, what are you doing here after all these years? The fairy godmother replied, Cinderella, you have lived an exemplary life since I last saw you. Is there anything for which your heart still yearns? Cinderella was taken aback, overjoyed, and after some thoughtful consideration, she uttered her first wish. The prince was wonderful, but not much of an investor. I'm living hand to mouth on my disability checks, and I wish I were wealthy beyond comprehension. Instantly, her rocking chair turned into solid gold. Cinderella said, Oh, thank you, fairy godmother. The fairy godmother replied, It is the least that I can do. What do you want for your second wish? Cinderella looked down at her frail body and said, I wish I were young and full of the beauty and youth I once had. At once, her wish became reality, and her beautiful young visage returned. Cinderella felt stirrings inside of her, 
that had been dormant for years. And then the fairy godmother spoke once more. You have one more wish. What shall it be? Cinderella looks over to the frightened cat in the corner and says, I wish for you to transform Bob, my old cat, into a kind and handsome young man. Magically, Bob suddenly underwent so fundamental a change in his biological makeup that, when he stood before her, he was a man so beautiful the likes of him neither she nor the world had ever seen. The fairy godmother said, Congratulations, Cinderella. Enjoy your new life. With a blazing shock of bright blue electricity, the fairy godmother was gone as suddenly as she appeared. For a few eerie moments, Bob and Cinderella looked into each other's eyes. Cinderella sat, breathless, gazing at the most beautiful, stunningly perfect man she had ever seen. Then Bob walked over to Cinderella, who sat transfixed in her rocking chair and held her close in his young, muscular arms. He leaned in close, blowing her golden hair with his warm breath as he whispered, Bet you're sorry you neutered me. <laughs> so it was raining hard and a big puddle had formed in front of an Irish pub. An old man stood beside the puddle holding a stick with a string on the end and jiggled it up and down in the water. A curious gentleman asked what he was doing. Fishing, replied the old man. Poor old fool, thought the gentleman, so he invited the old man to have a drink in the pub, feeling he should start some conversation while they were sipping their whiskey. The gentleman asked, And how many have you caught? You're the eighth, he replied. <laughs> So a man wanted to get married. He was having trouble choosing among three likely candidates. He gives each woman a present of $5,000 and watches to see what they do with the money. The first does a total makeover. She goes to a fancy beauty salon, gets her hair done, new makeup, buys several new outfits and dresses up very nicely for the man. She tells him, that she has done this to be more attractive for him because she loves him so much. The man was impressed. The second goes shopping to buy the man gifts. She gets him a new set of golf clubs, some new gizmos for his computer, and some expensive clothes. As she presents these gifts, she tells him that she has spent all the money on him because she loves him so much. Again, the man is impressed. The third invests the money in the stock market. She earns several times the $5,000. She gives him back his $5,000 and reinvests the remainder in a joint account. She tells him that she wants to save for their future because she loves him so much. Obviously, the man was impressed. The man thought for a long time about what each woman had done with the money he'd given her. Then he married the one with the biggest breasts. <laughs> Three Chinese brothers, Ba, Chu, and Fu were living in America illegally. So they decided to change their names to help avoid detection. Ba changed his name to Buck. Chu changed his name to Chuck. Fu was sent back to China. <laughs>